When I was a kid, I was nuts about dinosaurs. So probably what inspired me to get into physics was the desire to build a time machine. <laughs> when, I was a, when I was a little kid, uh, I sort of desperately wanted to build a time machine and go back in time and see real dinosaurs running around in the Mesozoic. And then as I learned more about what was involved in, um, what would be involved in building a time machine, obviously that had spin-offs in terms of learning about relativity and wormholes and all that sort of jazz. And that drew me in as an interest in its own sake once I learned enough about it. Uh, so I started off, I guess, with a, an interest more in the cosmology, general relativity side of physics. Um, but then as time went by, you know, I just picked up a broader knowledge about particle physics as well, quantum field theory. Um, yeah, I worked with, so I did my undergraduate degree and my PhD at the University of Adelaide in South Australia. Um, worked with Tony Williams and Derek Lineweather there. Um, doing my PhD project was in a field called lattice gauge theory, which is basically computer simulation of the strong nuclear force. Um, after that, I worked for a year at Seoul National University in South Korea, um, continuing along with the lattice gauge theory sort of research area. Uh, and I found after a bit of work in that field that I, it was not interesting me as much as the fundamental questions like where does quantum mechanics come from, why does space-time have three dimensions of space and one of time rather than some other number, although they're sort of really fundamental things. Um, and so I took a, a hiatus for a couple of years, did some work um, on some of those more things that I found more interesting for my personal sake um, and got headhunted essentially by Lee Smolin to go and work at the Perimeter Institute in Ontario. So I worked there for three years uh, and then I came back to the University of Adelaide and had a fellowship there for four years, a Ramsey, fo Ramsey postdoctoral fellowship there for four years. And that's been work which is more closely allied with physics beyond the standard model and um, loop quantum gravity. Well, I think it's, it all boils down to value judgments, doesn't it? Um, if you value create, or if you value curiosity, if you value intellectual development, if you value art, if you value knowledge, if you value human rights, if you value anything, these are all. I mean, you know, what's the what's the practical value of something like human rights? You know, it's it's purely something that makes people's lives better, um, increases their happiness and well-being for, for for a greater number of people. Uh, I think there's an inherent virtue or value in curiosity about the universe, uh, about discovering things, but there's also a longer term practical value in that uh, we don't get, you don't get spin-offs from fundamental research immediately, but you do get it in the long run. Um, the fact that we're sitting here having an interview is a consequence of hundreds of years worth of scientific investigation into why um, frogs legs twitch when you uh, connect them up to a battery, or why, um, you, know, you know, why lightning behaves the way it does, or all sorts of things. You know, why apples fall off trees, and without without some sort of general curious investigation into the world that we live in, we wouldn't have the intellectual foundations for then developing new things that come further on that you you have no prediction of what they're going to what they're going to yield. Um, I liked an analogy that someone once gave, that uh, if you had asked how to, how to improve communication technology um, 200 years ago, the answer would probably have been breed a faster pigeon. <laughs> spending, spending money on investigating electricity would not have even factored into the equation. But you know, without, without that, we wouldn't have had telegraphs and telephones and the internet and Wi-Fi and so on. Um, so if you want a practical spin-off from fundamental physics, you have to kind of participate in the research and support the research and recognize that historically it's always produced something useful. Um, and the other great thing is, you know, how um, Richard Feynman said, physics is like sex, it might produce something useful but that's not why we do it. And 
it's spot on the money you know for someone like me I do I do physics because it feels good <laughs> not because I want to see something practical come out of it but you know if if somebody built a time machine as a result of my research or <laughs> someone else's research or a you know a warp drive or something like that and we, we all got off got to go off and explore Alpha Centauri or, or uh, whatever then I'd be I'd be pretty damn happy and who knows but that might be what happens we just can't predict those sorts of things that far in advance what we can predict is that something good will come out of it and even if there's something that doesn't some aspect of a research program that doesn't produce a practical spin-off I think that our lives are enriched by being able to look at the world and understand it. I think that human life has a sort of higher quality to it as a result of being able to look up at the twinkly lights in the night sky and know that they are other suns with planets orbiting around them um, rather than just looking up and thinking, what are they? I hadn't really thought about it in terms of a moral compulsion before, but... I guess following on from what I said about the spin-offs um, and the improvement in the quality of human life through increased knowledge, um, then yes, I think there probably is a moral compulsion to do that because if we don't do research into how the universe works, then we don't have the foundation for creating technologies that improve the lives of people 50 years from now, 100 years from now, whatever. So we're kind of doing them a disservice so yeah, you could probably could argue that there's a moral compulsion, a moral imperative, to to do to do science in general, and in the same way that there's a moral imperative to do medical research, right? Um, I think you know we would be we would be doing future generations a disservice if we didn't lay the foundation for cancer treatments that will come along 20 or 50 or 100 years from now and we would do, be doing future generations a disservice if we didn't develop um, you know, better bionic limbs and so on and so forth that, that will benefit the generations that come after us. Um, I think in the same way there's a, probably we're doing a disservice to people if we don't do the, do the foundational research that gives new theories of physics you know, that, that might you know, allow future generations to hop in a starship and then fly off to Alpha Centauri in, in uh, you know, a week and a half instead of four and a half years. Well, I, I guess my, my take on the, the beauty, I guess, of physics um, is that it provides a certain amount of emotional satisfaction, really, in the same way that artwork does. It describes something about the world that we live in and hence something about our existence. Um, I think it differs from things like representational art um, in that it deals with a it deals with objective features um, the way we try to explain the world working in a specific way because it's partly because it's good to know that at an intellectual level, but also partly because it has practical values. Uh, whereas, whereas art often tries to speak to our emotions. Um, it doesn't mean that it, knowing how the universe works doesn't speak to our emotions as well, but it's a slightly different goal. Um, but you know, there, there's also art that has uh, qualities of expressing how the how the world works, like you know, Aboriginal art, which, which represents. The, in some cases the sort of x-ray structure of an animal and shows you something about you know, what you would find when you cut it open to prepare to cook it or which tells you something about the season of the year when certain plants are uh, producing edible fruit or that's that I think has a bit of an overlap with the study of the natural world as we as we do it in physics um, and there's something to be explored there but I'm not the most knowledgeable person in the world to talk about that. Thank <laughs> you.